Welcome to Back the Culture Show. We have a special treat for you this evening as we celebrate uh, a Jamaican icon. Talking about Miss Louise Bennett Covely. As we celebrate her birthday, we have so many distinguished guests lined up for you. Some giants in our culture. Music, art, oh my, I can't wait uh, for you to experience this presentation, this celebration. But as always, tell a friend that it's time for the Back to Culture show. Celebrating Miss Lou, I'm telling you, this is going to be another great one. Thanks for back the culture. Down below in the comment section, drop your favorite Miss Lou song, poem, or saying. Ring ding! Back the culture time. Back the culture show. Celebrating the icon. Miss Lou. This long time, girl, me never see you. Come let me hold your hand. Again. This a long time, girl, me never see you. Come let me hold your hand. Me and John Paul see them for three times. Pick up this last song. Let me hold your hand, girl. Let me hold your hand. All right, all right, all right. This a music for your town, dear little. Aye. Now you see, that is the Jamaican welcome song. Come let me hold your hand. Now, we, you have to welcome me, I welcome you. So, you boys sing with me. Come, let me hold your hand. Again. All right, all right, yes, dear. But I don't want to hear anybody say, come, let me hold your hand. No twanging. You see? Because you're going to pile up the culture. <laughs> no matter with that. Come, let me hold your hand. Come, let me hold you. This long time, down they never see you. As Miss Lou said, no pull up the culture. Come here, kick out the linseed market, not a quarty word sell. Come here, kick out the linseed market, not a quarty word sell. Oh, la, not a bite, not a bite, what a Saturday night. La, not a bite, not a bite, what a Saturday night. Everybody come feel up, feel up, not a quarty word sell. What them do? Everybody come feel up, feel up, not a quarty word sell. Oh, la, not a bite, not a bite. What a Saturday night. La, not a bite, not a bite. What a Saturday night. Make me call it loud, a key, a key, red and pretty dental. Celebrate to Miss Lou. The legendary Jamaican icon. But, la, Celebrating her birthday. Right here on Bat the Culture Show. Gonna send you back to Master Control. Master Control, take it away. Hello, 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 big and small, short and tall, and welcome to this celebration of the 103rd anniversary of the birth of our beloved Louise Simone Bennett Coverley. I know you can't wait to have some lemonade and some pudding and sing some come make me hold your hand. But Miss Lou would want to have us begin the proper way. And so we're going to start with Steve Higgins, leading us through the national anthem of Jamaica. Eternal Father, bless our land. Guard us with thy mighty hand. Keep us free from evil eyes. Be our light through countless eyes. To our leaders, great defender, grant true wisdom from above. Justice. Respect for all, stir response. 
Thank you so very much, Steve, for that beautiful rendition of the prayer that we call the National Anthem of Jamaica. And now it is time to party. I know that there are so many of you, like so many of us, who really believe that Mr. Lou is present, you know, and that we're happy and privileged to know and be with someone who is 103 years old because she possesses us and we possess her. Black Ellis possessor, that bumpy head girl, Joan Andrea possessor, the gentleman from the Institute of Jamaica, Faye Ellington possessor, you know who else possessor? the Council General of the Jamaica office in Miami, Mr. Oliver Mayer, who is himself a thespian. I bet you many of you didn't know that. He come from the stage. And so he has really made it his life's work that all the world's a stage. CG, would you step up, please? Greetings. My name is Oliver Mayer, Consul General of Jamaica, based in Miami, with responsibility for the Southern United States. I'm also the chairman of the Louis Bennett Heritage Council, and along with President Colin Smith and his dynamic team, we continue to provide um, productions on Louis Bennett annually, uh, right here in South Florida, but broadcast it to the world. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to Sit back, relax, and enjoy this production, which has been ably put together by Mr. Charles Smart, uh, the leader of the Back to Culture team. And I want to salute all the performers who have joined together to do this special presentation on our cultural icon, Miss Lou, who we all deeply love and appreciate. Miss Lou, Miss Lou, we love you for true. Miss Lou, Miss Lou, you make we feel brand new. Miss Lou, Miss Lou, you make we jump and sing. Miss Lou, Miss Lou, you are we everything. Well, that's my little poem. Not particularly great, but guess what? Miss Lou allowed us all to try a thing and to express ourselves. That's who Miss Lou was. She was somebody who encouraged and supported the arts and supported our culture. In fact, no matter where you came from in Jamaica, whether you were born above the clock, below the clock, in the clock, round the clock, no matter where you came from, you could feel at home and a part of the family with Miss Lou. In fact, I can remember waking up on a Saturday morning to watch Ring Ding and seeing kids uh, from all walks of life come and present either a poem or a little dance, a little drama, just some cultural expression. And she would always end by saying, clap them. No, man, that is, that's a thank you, thank you, clap. Clap them again. And everybody left feeling special. Well, that's what Miss Lou did for us as a people. She made us as Jamaicans feel proud of who we are as Jamaicans living in Jamaica. And wherever we go around the world, it's that culture that binds us together. And Miss Lou was perhaps the most significant cultural icon ever to come out of Jamaica. And she's the one that allowed us to feel proud 
of our Jamaican language. Patwa, make we feel for talk it with pride. And we're not afraid to express ourselves because Patwa, make we talk the thing in a way that we can express ourselves with more clarity. And we don't have to feel shame if we broke out in our native tongue because that is who we are. And who we are is we little but we tell our. We can do anything we set our mind to. And the performers you will hear from today are all cultural heavyweights who have been influenced by Miss Lou. And you'll hear them speak. We have, we have storytellers, we have actors, actresses, we have comedians, uh, we have historians. And each of them will give you a different perspective in the show. I had the honor of meeting Miss Lou in, in 2002 when I was here, when I was marketing manager at Air Jamaica. And I went in, I saw Miss Lou, a big, big for a picture, you know, and then I introduced myself and she said, what you say your name? I said, Oliver Mayor. Mayor, Mayor, Mayor. Hold on, you related to Tony Mayor? I said, yes. Wait, that are my two doctors. Know, yes. <laughs> Nobody can touch my mouth you know, except Tony. Only person can look after my teeth. He good, you see? Lord. Oy, what a man good. Me love my Tony. And so just talking to Miss Lou in that moment, Miss Lou made me feel like the most important person. And when you are around Miss Lou, you just feel love. And you feel to sing along with her, whatever the song. Sly mongoose, your name gone abroad. Are she talking up her poems? Dotty tough. Um no liquor twang, whatever it is. We love. Miss Lou's expression. She make we laugh. She make we cry. She make we smile. But more importantly, she make we think. And we always leave better than when we came in after her performance. Miss Lou was a folklorist, poet, educator, actress, um, singer, playwright, broadcaster. Miss Lou did it all but always at the forefront was to project our culture and to make us feel a sense of pride, especially in our language. Miss Lou presented the Jamaican language and culture to a wider world. We are beneficiaries of that audacity. And that is to quote my very good friend, former Consul General Basil Bryan, who was based in New York at the time. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy this lovely production. But most importantly, let us share it with all our friends and family. Let us ensure that we keep the work of Miss Lou alive and well, especially with our second, third, fourth, fifth generation of Jamaicans. And let's share it with the wider world because Miss, Miss Lou is a present, a treasure to the entire earth, the entire world. We love you, Miss Lou. Miss Lou, Miss Lou, we love you for true. Miss Lou, Miss Lou, you make me feel brand new. Miss Lou, Miss Lou, you are the star of the show. The people them a call for you to be a national heap. Well, you may not say anything and get in trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Aye, aye, aye. CG, CG, me glad to see you are going like you are one of Miss Lou picking me. And you already tell us who the president of the Louise Bennett Coverley Heritage Council. And so we are now going to invite him to talk to himself and see if he can talk like you. I am delighted to bring greetings and well wishes on this the anniversary of Miss Lou's birth. Today, Miss Lou would have been 103 years of age. And what a legacy she has left us. She still commands great admiration both in Jamaica and internationally. Her works are being used in schools and colleges, albeit not as much as we would like, and it is our hope that we will see an expansion of this in the future. The Florida-based Louise Bennett Coverley Heritage Council, for which I am currently the president, has dedicated its effort to the preservation of Jamaica's rich cultural heritage through the works of Miss Lou. 
Throughout the past 15 years, we have had writing clinics, reading festivals, and more recently, an annual Louise Bennett Coverley Memorial Lecture. Through our fundraising efforts, we have been able to make and award scholarships to the Edna Manley College for the Visual and Performing Arts in Jamaica, and also to the Broward College in Florida. More recently, we have awarded scholarships to students undertaking reggae studies at the University of the West Indies, and in collaboration with the Excelsior Alumni and the Dr. Sue Charitable Foundation, we have awarded three scholarships to annually to students from the Louise Bennett All Age School to attend Excelsior High School, Miss Lou's alma mater. At this point, I wish to highlight that as part of Jamaica's 60th anniversary celebrations, the Louise Bennett Coverley Heritage Council will be hosting the National Dance Theatre Company of Jamaica for two concerts in South Florida, one on October 1st at South Miami Dade Cultural Arts Center and the other at the Miramar Cultural Center on October 2nd. I am particularly heartened to hear of the inaugural Louise Bennett Coverley Festival to be held in Miss Lou Square in Gordontown, Jamaica on October 15th. This festival organized by Professor Opal Palmer Adissa. I also wish to thank Jamaica Heroes Modernized Project and Back the Culture Show, host of today's Bununu's presentation. They have in the past collaborated with us in celebrating Miss Lou. Also, the Institute of Jamaica for their support and the Louise Bennett Coverley Estate in Toronto, who has always supported us. We particularly wish to thank our sponsors and supporters, without whom we would not have achieved our goals. And as Miss Lou would say, thank you, walk good, and good up a walk with you. In everything that Colin just told us, he never told us that he needed time to go and change him clothes and take off the fancy jacket and put on the wonderful costume that he's going to be appearing in in a very special band. We soon tell about the band because the wonderful Mr. Colin Smith and the wonderful things that the Louis Bennett Coverley Heritage Trust is doing up there. Um, start the program with how Miss Lou would end the program with thank you and walk good. What he didn't tell us is that Miss Lou had her own unique way of beginning just about every show on which she appeared. You know how she started? When last you see Miss Lou. So I suppose if Miss Lou were here and she book you up, she would have said what? Long time, y'all, me never see you. Now, Mr. Colin Smith, 
has a very special band. You know, people like to relegate Jamaican music to something of the past, something you go to the museum to see, and say, oh, we started with Mento, as if Mento is no longer around. But we love to dress up with him. So we have Philharmonic Mento, and it's not just Philharmonic Mento, it is Philharmonic Mento Orchestra. Right, Mr. Colin? Long time, girl, me never see Everybody knows that Jamaica is big on just about everything Jamaica is big on. Science, literature, art, and culture. And the very first institution in this part of the world to be entrusted with curating science, art, and literature is the Institute of Jamaica. They are one of the partners in this evening's Bonononos presentation and the executive director of the IOJ, Mr. Vivian Crawford, now joins us in this celebration. On behalf of the Institute of Jamaica, it is my privilege, pleasure, and duty to be associated with Jamaica's Heroes Modernized Project, Back the Culture, um, and the support of Mr. Charles Smart. And this is in honor of Honorable Louis Bennett Coverley, OJ, on the occasion of the 60th anniversary of Jamaica's independence. Ms. Lou's contribution to the intangible heritage of Jamaica is impatient of debate. And in recognition of such contribution, she was inducted as a fellow of the Institute of Jamaica in 2003. According to our own Professor Colin Channa, our ancestors did not arrive through immigration, but through customs because they were regarded as goods. An unfortunate outcome of this is what sociologists would refer to as acculturation, that is the assimilation to a different culture and the impact on language would be significant. So long before UNESCO declared a strategy for language that the child should be guided by the language of the mother tongue in building in the, on the knowledge and experience of both teacher and learners, Honorable Louise Coverley was a pioneer in this field. I remember Miss Lou sharing with me that at her first performance of a poem she wrote, this was at a concert. A man peeped through the window and said, 
Is that your mother send you a school to learn? She was undaunted and not disobedient to her mission. And we are grateful to Professor the Honorable Mervyn Morris for his essay that Miss Lou's work should be taken seriously because this gave voice to those who wanted to speak or sing. On a personal note, I want to share with you memorabilia associated with Miss Lou, selected poems, uh, that book that she autographed for me, a Christmas card that she sent to me, and the invitation to this special tribute to Miss Lou by the government and people of Jamaica on the 6th of August, 2003 at Emancipation Park. We are ever indebted to Miss Lou and any recognition for her contribution to nation building should be embraced. I end with the chorus from her favorite hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Mr. Vivian Crawford, who didn't say how proud he is of his own maroon heritage, cause maroon in a all away. Mr. Crawford, I see you got the memo. You dress up in white like me, and Miss Lou watching over the toy to make sure so we get it right. You know who get it right? Owen Blacker Ellis. Owen Blacker Ellis has put together his own understanding of the breadth of Miss Lou's impact on Jamaica and Jamaican performers. So let us hear now what Owen Blacker Ellis have to say about who him think Miss Lou influenced, and then perhaps we will hear from some of them. We celebrate Miss Lou because she has left a lasting legacy. She has left indelible footprints. Miss Lou's work has influenced so many people who are carrying on the baton so wonderfully. I mean, people like her dear friend and Garden Town neighbor, the Honorable Barbara Gloudon, who wrote in the Star of Celeste. People like in, in Toronto, Letna Allen. People like in Florida, Dr. Sue. People like in Jamaica, Amina Blackwood Meeks, John Andrew Hutchinson, and the inimitable and wonderful, luminously radiant and transcendent, effervescent Faye Ellington. People like those have all been influenced by Miss Lou and carry on her great and lasting legacy. We love Miss Lou and we celebrate Miss Lou. All of it is Miss Lou. Yes, me and you. Miss Lou. Oh, Miss Lou. Those days. She was everything to me. When I was growing up, man, Miss Lou used to take me from ring ding to perform in her poems to, to, to meeting her. Yes, man. Me meet Miss Lou, I tell you. Went to King's House one time and she come up to me and she said, put us congratulations. Well done. And never stop writing. And I tell you, I don't forget them sitting there, you know. But yes, the more me think about her, me think about when we did young. And me used to uh, 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 perform our pieces. I'll go a festival, you know. Yes, man. The teacher, they used to get me and have me a perform and a camera festival. I represent school. But I just used to love our pieces. And whether it was social commentary, commentary, or political commentary, you know, it was just colorful, humorous, and 
always informative, always informative. So I, I kind of gotten so much from her because I, I, I mirrored her so much over the years. As I say, she was my icon and my role model, my mentor. And um, I kind of write in the same vein. But when we think about it, remember things like, um, I mean, I go see all of them, but snippets like when she had talked about, you know, them boy, they were going far in and come back and then all of, all of a sudden they might um, the, the, the one with me always had was Mary Dryfoot boy. What are wrong with Mary Dryfoot boy? Them girl got him for Mac. And when we see him the day, the boy give me a shock. Me tell him, say, auntie and him cousin, them say, howdy. And ask him how he's getting on. Here, the boy. Oh, jolly, jolly. No. If you so love them, sit there, though. Because as people go far and come back, they used to take it, tell them in the community to use Miss Lou poem them and tell her the, 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 the people them we are twang and go and like say then they are far in long. Yes. And then too, we always did enjoy the cost them. You have the cast, cast, you have the, 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 the candy lady, candy woman, uh, and you have cos cos. All of them something there. Just to hear how we as Jamaicans call a colorful man when we are cos. So you have like cos cos. One, your favorite take, Greg. That is where you're going to go do. You and your boo boo, you have a friend them. You think me afraid of you? Go away. Your favorite head, Daniel. Wait, is it me you're going to go trace? Miss just the one to take me hand and leg go in your face. No, imagine. Imagine Miss Lua Lego had by anybody. She was such a lovely, nurturing soul. But you get the picture. Just how we trace one another. And a lot of we know are more talk than anything else. Because we bark louder than we bite. Yes. And then as for me you now, I am a product of the Windrush community, you know, that back in the 1950s when everybody did a go to England. Yes, me a result of all of that. So me used to love to go out and perform the one colonizing in reverse. What a joyful news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart going boss. Jamaica people colonizing England in reverse. By the hundred, by the thousand, from country and from town, by the ship load, by the plane load, Jamaica is England bound. Eh, them a poor out of Jamaica. Everybody future plan. I fit get a big time job as settling at the motherland. Eh, only for them really settle there, you know. We never settle for too long. My parents did come back home, but yes colonizing in reverse. No, we are colonized America. As a matter of fact, America colonized Jamaica. It's all in reverse. But yes, I tell you, she was such an influence on me. So my first book, my first poem after performing all these years and doing her thing and being encouraged to write my own stuff. I remember when she passed away, I did Ode to Miss Lou. Ode to Miss Lou, Miss Lou gone, but our style still live on. Me now go make it dead, for with culture and lyrics we must be fed. Me could never be Miss Lou, you know, no sir. She was in a class by herself, but the re-engineer Dr. Sue, I go make sure say our legacy stay upon the shelf. Yes, we as Jamaicans, we need to celebrate. We, we, we um, uh, mm. Yes, with youth, with honoraries, and with friends. Big up with creativity, no hate. No, Miss Lou, Uncle Charlie, and the rest, spend them tears giving up them best. The least that me and you can do is make sure so we see them legacy true. So, Miss Lou, gone. But our style still live on. Me now go make it dead. For with culture and lyrics, we must be fed. Ay, ay, ay. I was so impacted by this. So much so. I remember that I was asked to do a performance from a girls' brigade teacher who told me to go home and learn something. No, but my father is something else. You know, he, he was like, you have to speak proper, you have to speak proper all the time. 
And he was like, when you speak properly, I will reward you. So we were rewarded many times. So I was, I was rewarded many times for that. I made sure I spoke properly all the time. I had a sister. She never cared to speak properly all the time. She just wanted to just talk her platform. She said, you can know, put in a meta, my platform, 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 and I sat about where you see me try a no more that mug and young bitch. You come put me in a class because I'm big like I'm told. She said, Come call me Dundee. Huh? I stopped because I was trying to recruit. And then my father came out and he said, Faith, Faith, why did you turn off the radio? I thought, Why did you turn off the radio? The radio was a dancer. He said, You turn off the radio. Don't. Tell me a lie. You turned off the radio. I heard Miss Lou and you turned off the radio. You know, telling me that you didn't turn off the radio. I said, Papa, I didn't turn off the radio. So, so he said, Okay. You didn't turn off the radio? I heard Miss Lou. I said, I was doing Miss Lou's fun. So maybe that's what you heard. So he said, Okay, Miss. If you are doing Miss Lou's fun, do the poem right now. Let me hear it. So, I started. You see me try a long one? That mug again, I mean, you come put me in a class because I'm big like a toe. She said, come call me, tell me. I'm going to go with child, you know, found me, get a wrong midnight, no one's cursing at him. He said, smiley, tell me, stare at shit till I'm out. That you know what I'm going to do, definitely check her out. And the same smiley, we tell me, stare at the smiley, we know when you read it, tell that smiley. And I was my me. I went and started with Chatterton. I'm glad I wasn't dying. For a musket of temper with the temper wine. A musket of fire with me and with the temper wine. I'm going to take it off. For then, you said, he knew the right to be with God. I hear, said so James, I was a she made a smiley. Tell Miss Mother, said she made a so sound beat low. We spike your father, she got fast. So tell that, then that tell that, then by the time of soon, then so ox matty, and you know the size of your mouth, then go call you with the name, and then the whole poor world. But Lucy said, don't beat her. You must go throwing a stone. I met me sick and fuck with poor girl, can I have one? A real right through the yard. And now the car and car, they will look, me not be easy for them, cascades. But for my life, he's what I'm going to call Well, when Papa heard that, he said, what? You sound just like this now. Well, that was it. I went off to Kingston, because I'm from Chatterton, Carlo. Went off to Kingston, and I met this new I was giving a part in the back to my music boy, and met this new was very excited and she also found me that I could talk at her. Oh, did she hear Miss Lou? She was excited about it so much. She told her friend, she said, I want little one, I wanted to talk, talk like me, to for the Lord. So she said, Do it no man, do it no way. So I started to do a little thing. Here on Lord, Lord. You know she even sound better than me. <laughs> this is what something yeah. I remember with so I, I, I years later I remember coming to God and told to you, right? Close to Miss Lou and we go to pantomimes together. We had lots of fun. Miss Lou was so much fun. I remember her saying to me one time, I she went away and she said. She didn't know saying, you know, make me, you know, make my husband left me. I said, how much you? She said, you know, let me make my husband left him because him, him, he heard me from radio. And I knew from radio, and he knew some me gone abroad. Lord of mercy, Mrs. He did a mash up my marriage. Heavenly. She said, I remember a lot of times. Miss Lou said to me, 
I, I hear that you took, you played part of the song when you came back. When I came back, I hear that you played part of me. But please, darling, you are not me yet. So you know what's going to happen? I am going to ask them to pay you, but they have to pay me. Hi, <laughs> because you see that you the name and I know you. <laughs> this was so much fun. She was, she was really a lot of fun. I enjoy the fact that she impacted on me so much. Clap yourself. I am Opal Palmer Adisa. And that is one of the most affirming things that anyone can say, to clap yourself. And Louise Bennett Coveley, in her show, Ring Ding, the first, might I add, Jamaican show for children, every time invited children to clap themselves and clap one another. Because she understood how important it was that we affirm who we are. It was and is her legacy. Louise Bennett gave us ourselves, the best of ourselves, the most humorous aspect of ourselves to celebrate and made us feel proud to be Jamaicans, not just because of our food, but importantly, because of our culture. And I personally want to thank Miss Lou, Louise Bennett, for giving me my poetic voice. It was by listening to her and reading her poems that I felt confident enough to write in my nation tongue, my mother tongue, the Jamaican nation language. And I don't think if, uh, if it wasn't for Miss Lou that that could have happened. So, you know, and there's a, a kind of vibrancy about Miss Lou. What a joyful news, Miss Matty in speaking of our independence, in talking about our culture, the fact that she is a warrior and her legacy that she leaves us is so rich and so vast, but she really was a champion for Jamaicans in all of the work that she did, in the folklores that she collected, in the cultural activism that she did by recording the everyday life of Jamaicans and celebrating the everyday lives of Jamaican, in the ethnography that she did, in the nationalizing of the pantomime, because certainly she and Rani Williams were the first to nationalize the pantomime so that the story, the context, as well as the movement and the rhythm was Jamaican. So I believe that Louise Bennett is, I know that she's our heroine. I know that what she has done for me and countless others in terms of giving us a sense of pride and respect for all aspects of the culture, her tremendous diversity and range as a comic, as an actress, as an ethnographer, as a folklorist, as a writer, as a teller of tales, a storyteller, as a creator of uh, things for children, Miss Lou is a big woman. You know, and when we say someone is a big woman or a big person in Jamaica, it's not just about physical size. It's about their mind. It's about what they do. It's about how they celebrate us. And so Louise Bennett Coverley has left us a legacy and a tremendous body of work that we can continue to plumb and plumb and plumb from. And scholars and folklorists and children who are performing tales, not just in Jamaica, but throughout the Caribbean, as well as North America, can learn so much about who we are as a people. What are our strengths and our nuances and our little uh, idiosyncrasies are because of what Miss Lou, because of what Louise Bennett wrote and recorded for us. So in this day, her birthday, I say big thanks, Miss Lou, enough respect. I know your doppy is there somewhere still guiding us. And I thank you. I thank you for your contribution. I thank you for your vision. I thank you for your legacy. How do you do everybody? I am Raul Blaze. I am a dance and fitness instructor. I'm a foreign languages uh, tutor, and I consider myself a cultural ambassador. I have an immense love for my country and its culture, and um, a lot of that has to do with Miss Lou 
and her work in preserving the Jamaican vernacular. A matter of fact, um, whenever I'm asked um, of the languages I speak, which is my favorite, Patois by far. Um, this poem, Miss Joyce Mongrel Dog, was written two years ago and it was chosen to be a part of the Miss Lou 100 Voices collection, so I'm so honored. And now it's a part of my collection of poems called Femi Patois. Um, 10 poems, 10 proverb, and one original story. So I hope you enjoy this. It's called Miss Joyce Mongrel Dog, written by Raoul Blaze, but influenced by the work of Miss Lou. Miss Joyce have a look at Mongrel, you see? Me warn him much time. And if me go take sing thing and lick him down now, them go charge me for murder crime. You can't tell her nothing about her mongrel. She take Jesus off of the cross. She rather sit down and gas the people business about cow fat and dead ass. Guess who thief sister puny me white for them? So the same look a brute. One day after mass, Jasper catch him in him ground and broke him front foot. But I know white fall alone in thief. All jankro, babble dove and duck. Him all thief the yellow from out of the egg. And all know the eggshell no broke. Him thief sugar. Him thief butter. All butcher bone and meat. Oh, him get past mad with so much sharp cutlets. Only God alone know how him do it. Jump through window and pick door lock. Miss Joyce dog brazen, you see. One come lead down with family one. But she not ready for pitney. Aunt Inez no say love him belly. So she pies in the bread. You lick him down, him bounce right back with a hard mongrel for dead. Me go take my fast, go intervene. I who tell me if you open my mouth. The rock stone dumping woman cuss me off and tell me if you out. But police station I build on a square. So Miss Joyce Mongrel free paper soon bun. Wait, I don't think I do a real dog me I talk about. The mongrel is Miss Joyce Watless Mongrel's son. Aye, aye, aye. Ladies and gentlemen, as I come tonight to celebrate none other than the Honorable Dr. Louis Bennett Covalley. For my family and a pian pian, my daughter so they teach. And when rain falls and passes, sick my son, you're right, Pete. Sunday gone rain falls until pass and couldn't leave the yard. People in a church and so you right, get rid of You see what I go with this, my people? Me come to celebrate the culture of the only icon that makes patois not a dialect but a language. And since me is Miss Matilu from up in the 90s, I have to give you some of the little, little things I do all the time. So me he bought my bank up on my head because market might still have won. The buggy broke. The buggy broke. The buggy broke and the house fall down. The buggy broke. The buggy broke. The buggy broke and the house fall down. Yes, get up. Yes, get up. Yes, the top and in yellow gun, in yellow gun, in yellow gun, in yellow gun for Miss Mary Land, Miss Mary Land, Miss Mary Land. The house a jar up, Miss Mary Land, Miss Mary pick a junker tick, Miss Mary pick up a junker tick. She fling the tick, she fling the tick, she fling the tick and bush a get lick, bush a get lick, bush a get lick. Bush I get back some pick up a brick. A fight when broke. A fight when broke. A fight when broke in a jack a stone. And all because the buggy broke. The buggy broke and the ass fall down. It's long time. Boy, I never see you. Who oh, make me hold your hand. Miss Lou, me glad you walk by this way. You make it comfortable for me to talk the way me want to talk. You know the language that me love so good. Me, you're not there, but we keep on move on. And we are celebrating the culture. See them so. So it's evening time and work is over. So make me catch up the fire. And pass me the gungu peas. And rub up the flowers here. Lord, sir. Feel the evening breeze. Mama Lou, keep on resting until such great day. When the people of Jamaica put on the big heel boot on the barefoot pants and go celebrate Miss Lou life. Because if I never she, all of who would not even talk like who would talk now in a public and everywhere else. So I me left you with this. If Miss Lou never walked this way, then me couldn't know said the bankrupt couldn't balance for me head. And it's balancing the bankrupt. So ladies and gentlemen, happy 68 independence. And Mama Lou would be 103. 
Rest in peace. Ay, ay, ay. We have to celebrate Miss Lou. Who? Me and you. Because of the range of her work. Her range was vast. Miss Lou had a point for every occasion. From political commentary to social discussions, she had a point for woman, point for man, point for lovers, point for protest. Her work had a vast range. And as actors, you can find a Miss Lou poem, a Miss Lou piece for every context. From the boy, everybody know Love Letter. I want the one that I by my favorite. It's a poem for a boy, for a young man, street boy. I beg your pardon, copy, lad. No, no, can't be God jail, sir. But my friend them there, why? Lady, come back for me, no ma. And not go and do it again, sergeant. I go and go join boy scout. Me do a custom for that bad old sir, it fly out of my mouth. Beg you eat me up, the sergeant. You was a little boy. That same what might have slipped from you. Nobody with me, why? Me mama, oi. Me mama, oi. Me what, me mama. Tan. It mistake you make her purpose, make a leg of my hand. Lord, thank you so what a good man. Make her kiss your foot. I go and run home to mumma now. I get friend do you brute? Miss Lou had a wide range of work. That's why we have to celebrate Miss Lou. Miss Lou is immortal. Miss Lou, we love you. I I listened to all the presentations that we just saw. And one of my unfulfilled dreams is playing in my head. And that is that I wish that I had met Miss Lou's mother. There is something about the way Miss Lou talks about and writes about her mother and the way I understand the relationship between Miss Lou and her mother from my friend, Professor Marvin Morris, that she is the power behind the throne. And not only is she the power behind the throne, but she informs us of what can become of children when they are close to their parents, and particularly when they are close to their mother. We know, of course, that a very unfortunate incident robbed uh, Louise Simone Bennett Coverley of growing up with her father, the way she grew up with her mother. And that makes me want to know a little bit more about the home life of Louise Bennett that the public loved and continues to love. What is it that we did not see and could not have seen? And what is it that we could learn about Miss Lou in retrospect from people who were privileged and blessed to share that personal space with her. I wonder if her son Fabian would join us now to share some of that special privacy. Fabian, it's great to see you. Oh, yeah, how you do? Thank you, thank you. One of one of the songs that Miss Lou wrote, which many people believe it's a general folk song, Howdy, how you do? Thank you, thank you. When she was commissioned uh, by Jamaica Welfare to go around the country teaching us how to behave, how to become. Did you have that in your household? Was she always telling you, tie your shoes, lace and smile, because Howdy and thank you, no broke no square? Now, to be quite truthful, I heard it, but I didn't pay it any mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you are one of those. Uh, yeah, but you see, when, you know, Miss Lou was a persona on the outside, and she was the, the mother figure on the inside, right? From she touched touch the lawn and come up and come into the house. It was a different persona, right? And um, the, the, the persona that many people or thousands of people saw on the stage, she didn't bring it home with her. It was a different persona. It was a, it was a mother. What are the markers of some of those um, differences? Because many of us experienced Miss Lou as a mother outside of the house. So what would you, see, would you say are some of the markers of the Miss Lou that she left outside and the Miss Lou that she brought inside? 
<laughs> I was hoping that I wouldn't have to pause when you asked me them question there. But anyway. She yeah. never beat you now, so you can tell me. <laughs> oh, Lord. No. When she came home, she she the persona changed to household. What's for dinner? Right? Um, is her mother, Miss Miss Rob, I called her Miss Rob. She called her Kiri, or she called her Love, right? She had two names for her, Kiri and Love, right? And um, nine times out of ten, when she got home, my father wasn't home. But um, so she would first check in with, with Miss Rob, who I call Miss Rob, who was my grandmother, right? And make sure that everything is cool with her, right? Then she would wa walk into the kitchen to check Gladys to see what Gladys made for dinner. Because it would be about that time. Unless she didn't um, go out. And there are many days when she, she did most of her writing in her, actually in her bedroom, on, on a desk in our bedroom there. All right, and then you know things would. She would kind of um, call out, or people would come in and check in with her and says, "Well, Miss Lou, what you want for lunch?" Right, and then she would go through the itinerary of what she knew was in the cupboard, and what she you know because if she put it in the cupboard, right? If she go to the supermarket and and buy all those things, and uh, so she she had the inventory in her head to know what it is, or Gladys would tell her, well, you know, we're going we're, we're gonna to make a chicken today and we're going to either frizzy it or we're going to uh, fry it or we're going to uh, jerk it or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. But um, and then, then she would have to check with me if I have any homework, right? right? And she did help me a lot with my homework. Right. I'm 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 going to leave those contradictions there for a little while between Miss Lou the teacher and the teacher teacher and the different methodologies because I don't want to skip over something which for me is very significant that you said, which many of the people are listening might not recognize. Miss Kerry was her mother, Kareen. Is that correct? Kareen. Kareen right. Robinson. Yes, and many of us, and many of us believe that once Miss Lou became an adult, she was no longer in that relationship with her mother. No, 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 no. To the very end, to the very end, her mother was all the way there. When when Miss when Miss Rob died, Miss Lou called her love, L O V E, right, or Kirin, Kiri, right. I call her Miss Rob because her name was Robinson, Miss Robinson, right? Um, in fact, when Miss Lou wasn't there, is Miss Rob run the household, right? She was head cook and buckle washer, right? Everybody, when, you know, like I said, when, when Aunt Louise wasn't there, I called her Aunt Louise, okay? I didn't call her mom, I called her Aunt Louise, okay? And uh, it's it's miserable. If I needed money or anything else like that to go to school in the morning for lunch money, I got to Miss Rob, right? Because Miss Lou wouldn't be up so early. Neither would my father, but Miss Rob was up, right? I could always go to Miss Rob. Like I said, Miss Rob was the household. Miss Rob was the key, the key for Miss Lou. And when Miss when Miss Rob died, Miss Lou went into deep depression. Don't go there yet. Don't go there. Would you say that uh, Miss Lou, and I, and I always say Miss Kareen Robinson, so I'm happy to hear that you call her Love and Kerry. Would you say that, that she was Miss Lou's consultant, that Miss Lou would go to her mother for all the important decisions that she had to make? All the household important decisions, when it comes to theater, she would consult with my father. I want to go back a little bit to when her mother died, because certainly 
um, as a superhuman, as a superhero, as a super figure, we have this image of Miss Lou as being always full of joy. And here you are saying that even as an adult, when she lost her mother, her own mother, she was deeply affected by it. Actually, Miss Lou was traveling when her mother died. Right? And um, she arrived home. And the first thing she did, she, you know, from what I heard, she went straight to the room because I think the body was still there. She broke down. You know, um, this, what I'm relating to you is not what I saw, it's hearsay. And, and, and even as hearsay, it's difficult for you to talk about it. It is because, you know, it, it, you know I, I was so many thousand miles away and hearing that Miss, Miss Rob died, you know, I mean, Miss, just talking about it right now, my stomach hurts. All right. I, I appreciate that. Let's, let's shift a little um, in, 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 in the last few minutes that we have to your role as keeper of the legacy, because that's, that's something I see you doing. But I want to ask you it this way. Is there any project that Miss Lou didn't finish that you knew about that you now say, I know that this was very dear to my mother and I want to take it on and finish that project? Anything, write a play, sing a song, act in a movie, adopt more children, feed the poor. What well, is it? Okay, rule out adopting children because she, she couldn't handle it then. <laughs> we don't give her enough. Yeah, she had enough. <laughs> her cup run it over in that, um, in that spear. Miss Lou was always feeding at least 17 people every day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Right, John Public didn't know that. Right, but that was a, a everyday thing. Yeah. So, uh, so the the with reference to projects, I don't think she had our our last project was looking after her husband. That was our last major project. She dedicated herself to looking after her husband. Right. If it wasn't, uh, had, if, her, if her husband wasn't sick, she probably would have buried it in Jamaica, right? But by coming to um, Canada, he lived 17 years more than he should have, right? So she did it. Her, her last project was the dedication of her, you know, to keeping Eric alive, right? And after he died, uh, right, she decided, you know, I wouldn't say decided, but really realize that after two years, the job is finished. Hey Ben, I want to thank you. You've told us so much. And as you, as you talk about Miss Lou and Eric, what comes to my mind is their everlasting love song, Female Love Have Lion Heart. And what you are telling me in this exchange that we, we, we've had is that Miss Lou had a lion heart love for everything with which she was involved. Her children, her management of the household, the love that she poured into other people, her relationship with, 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 her, with, with her mother and the legacy that she has left with you in the project I know that you have taken on, which is to deepen your understanding and recollection and recording of Jamaican proverbs. Oh, 
you know, I, I live by the, the mantra, um, maintain the memories and legacy of Eric and Louise Bennett Coverley alive. And there is no better way to say happy birthday to her. No, there is no be better way. Her 102nd I mean, birthday. I, I Thank give you so thanks, very much. I give thanks to Jamaica for honoring her this way. Walk good, Fabian, and good to uh, walk with you. All the time. Stay safe. God bless. And you too. You know, I believe that everybody who has worked with Miss Lou, listen to Miss Lou, talk with Miss Lou. Miss Lou make them feel like say, is she and them alone is the only two people in the world? That certainly was the way I felt when I first met Miss Lou in person. Because I feel like I did always know her. It seems to me that the only time the radio was turned on in my house, back in the days when you used to sit around the radio and look inside of it and watch it, was when the Lou and Rani show was coming on between five and six in the evening. So I, I, I almost feel as if I grew up with Louis Bennett and I didn't know that everybody in the world never talked like that, but that's a different story. I encountered Miss Lou in 1979. 1979, I had the privilege, the honor, and the pleasure of co-presenting one episode of Ring Bing to mark the International Year of the Child because there was a movement that the International Year of the Child should not end without a particular law being passed to recognize um, Jamaican children and Jamaican mothers, and that was the maternity leave law. The organization I was in wanted children to be brought into this conversation. And so we approached Miss Lou to say, we can come by ringing and, and, and talk about how important the year of the child is without hesitation. Miss Lou said, yes. Guess who them said? Mwah! Me turn up the morning now, man, the Saturday morning with my story. If you go tell the children them. And when Miss Lou introduced me, me nervous, me nervous, so till. And me whisper to Miss Lou and me tell her, I say, tell them to clap loud because me nervous. Me never mean fear if you do it, you know. But would you believe Miss Lou say? <laughs> Uh, wanna clap her, clap loud because she's nervous. I remember that. I remember that all my life. I remember many other special occasions I shared with Miss Lou and one she didn't even know that I was sharing. I had the honor and the privilege of conducting the last interview with Miss Lou that she did in Jamaica in 2003 when she paid her last visit to us. She was giving two interviews that day. Me was one and Ian Boyne was the other. And when we turned up at Pegasus, Margarita Sanju said, you know, say Miss Lou tired and she can only do one interview. And because um, Ian Boyne did bigger than me and have more status than me, him take the one interview and him gone. And Margarita said, Miss Lou said, if you can stay, she's going to have a rest. And when she wake up, she going to do the interview. Thank you, Miss Lou. Thank you, Margarita. And so, me wait till Miss Lou rest and me get up. And as so comes it that I was able to do the last interview with her in Jamaica. And then my other, and then we had many special moments. We had the moment when I was um, a presenter on the morning program, Smile Jamaica. And we decided one day when the program fell on Miss Lou's birthday to call her up in Canada and wish her a happy birthday. And we are talk and we are carry on. And there was a little segment of Smile Jamaica called the Cyber Center. And the wonderful Mr. O'Neill, who was in charge of the Cyber Center, signed off by saying, Miss Lou, next time you can send us an email, you hear? That time email, I want brand new thing, you know. Be sure Miss Lou didn't know about email. Here, Miss Lou. I want that mass, huh? And of course, we had peals of laughter. So, and then we had many more encounters. And the final encounter was when Miss Lou's body was um, repatriated to Jamaica for burial. 
And I was selected along with Barbara Gluten, Vivian Crawford, Marjorie Wiley, and there were two other people. Six of us went to the airport to receive her body. So I, I had a special relationship with her in life. We shared many wonderful moments together that she was aware of. And then that final moment that she was aware of because we know how we remain aware even when people think we're not aware. And there are many other people who shared very special, very personal moments with Miss Lou at work and at play. I think you want to hear from some of them now. I never believed that I would meet Miss Lou because to me at the time when I hear she the parade and she have born with the Rani and Louis show life in hopeful village and all them sort of things them. I just dream. I just I could just love her from a distance. You know, I could love her in the in the fusion. Never ever know say me would have had the great opportunity of um of 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 being on stage with her. You know, when initially when there was that we I lived at a place, I lived on an estate and um in the town of Port Maria um she was coming and that was a big deal. It was like the Queen of England coming to Jamaica and them time there and me say me take up myself and walk from Harmony Hall to Port Maria because see this woman they were it I am sure it was this big campaign they have about tide because i think she was the one who sing i put the clothes in the fab to soak your man you running joke soaking alone can't make clothes clean come over my yard and see what me mean um it's something to that effect and me did i forget me i may see this fabulous lady with this 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 captivating smile on her head tying into our national dress and so on and I just dream, I said, Lord, I would have loved to meet her one day, I would have loved to meet her. And let me tell you something, you see. I'm going to go down and join the Little Theatre Movement. They had established a drama school and I joined it. And um, in the first year, I, they were going to do a revival of, of the pantomime music boy. And fortunately, I was casted in it. And look at my man. <laughs> I, there was my queen. There was my Louise Bennett Coverley. There was my Miss Lou. And you see, when I perform one night, when I perform, so she come up to me and she said, Look a fellow, and where you come from? And I said, I'm from St. Mary, originally Miss Lou. And she said, Lord, and she started to give me a whole history of the kindness. How she said she did so much research um, in St. Mary and how kind the people were. You know, she had to cross the river. Somebody would get one donkey and put her upon it and make sure cross the river. Because Miss Lou was one of these persons. She had a wealth of information about the culture, about the expressions, about singing and the reason for the songs, these folk songs and all like that. Yes, so she is my Miss Lou and she really has propelled me to, to be proud of my language and my language because I fear language and um, I, wherever I go, I speak the language, the Jamaica language. And it is because of Miss Lou, because Miss Lou speak it without any apology. And so me talk it without any apology too. So I am forever indebted to the one and only Miss Lou. 
My name is Joan Andrea Hutchinson, and I've had the wonderful privilege and distinction of having an amazing personal relationship with Dr. the Honorable Louise Bennett Coverley, Miss Lou. You know, I remember going to Canada, laying down crossway, her bed, and Miss Lou teaching myself and loving there together, teaching us, you know, Jamaican folk songs and poems and stories. And what I am grateful for is the way Miss Lou has paved the way for writers and performers like myself, like Muta Baruka, like Yasa Safara, like Amina Blackwood Meeks, Miss Lou, we just want to thank you. And so my tribute to Miss Lou is called Tanky Miss Lou, Tanky. You know me, me is a born Jamaican, I'm me proud. I'm a wife to feel proud too, to walk around and big up your chest and say thanks to Miss Lou. You see, when she, when she did start, she never knew how it would go. And enough, enough people went to laugh and I call her puppy show. But she got on strong and she stick it out because she knows that she did right. In her belly bottom, she didn't know one day they would have happy to the light. You see, end time trouble take we. I miss low and put with good name on the map. And when that push Jamaica heritage and large, she wouldn't stop. She said, Take kim tea, keep a heart bun. When times never so sweet, good luck will come as long as fall a crutch up down the heap. Enough of them, they think that she's crazy. Enough, make up them face. How Miss Lua chat this boogie yaga pat was something all over the place. Because guess what? They went in pat was bad English. Them never know. Poor thing. Them wouldn't tell Nancy's story and folk song. Them wouldn't sing. But guess what? And the jackass with the long tail bag of folk coming down. And the peel like junk up and tree top just make them heads spin wrong. And little by little, them start to back her. Start to fan her flame. And say they after so much here, Miss Lou, our household name. Now, we know she be chat with own language. And we don't thank you for it, Miss Lou. Them a teach it clear at university and Uncle Seeker, you. They may make film, they may write book, they may sing whole heap of song and say, who, hey, Patwa is a good language, but you will know that all along. So now we turn up proud to be Jamaican and we want the whole world to hear. Miss Lou, no thanks for how the Antenki never broke no square. Thank you, Miss Lou. Thank you. A lot of people say, yes, I may live a foreign. Oh, no, can't go on. Any which part me live? Toronto, London, <laughs> Florida, <laughs> and Jamaica, me there. Many people wear many hats or many head ties. And in the case of Marjorie Wiley, we, the nation of Jamaica, tend to know of her and think about her as the fantastic music ethnologist that she is. The master drummer, the master pianist, and the master jazz musician. You know what I think? I think it is almost impossible. It is almost disrespectful to talk about the career of Louise Bennett as we came to know her without saluting Marjorie. 
So there, there is a way in which when we salute Miss Lou, we're saluting many other people and we're recognizing that hand pa hand make hand clap. And so Marjorie is one of those hands that made Miss Lou's hands clap. And I can hear Miss Lou say, no, clap her, clap her. Come in, Marjorie. I want to tell you about the songs that I, I um that I played on the piano. Um, both of them um, owe a lot to Miss Lou. I learned them from her. Um, before I started doing Ring Ding with her, you won't know about Ring Ding. It was a, a television show for children, mm. and we did it for about eight or nine years. Remember the riddle, the Marjorie. <laughs> We used to do riddle, and we would say, Riddle me this, riddle me that, cast me the riddle and perhaps not. Four foot sit down on the four foot, I wait for four foot. Me, Miss Lou, me, Miss Lou, me, Miss Lou. It's a pussy sit down on that table, I wait to catch a rat. <laughs> then Miss Lou, you remember the, the morning the little one come, and she said, Miss Lou, I have one, I have one, I have one. Um, um, what front of? Front a woman and back a cow. <laughs> See Miss Lou here? Yes, darling, I know what that one is. And, um, the first one I played was Evening Time. Now, it has two verses, and all the words were written by Miss Lou. The music was by an English lady who taught at Alpha for a number of years, um, and then retired and went back to England. And she had this music that she had written. And Miss Lou took it and put words to it. Mm -hmm. And she sang it. And then it was used in a pantomime mm -hmm. and so on. And it talks about carrying the head on the, the basket on your head and so on. And come ask Joe, rest yourself, myself, dear son, because all day they've been working and all of that. So it talks about how to rest in the evening and so on, have something to eat, dance, and all of that kind of thing. Second one is um, female love have lion heart, and a lion is a strong animal. So it means that the love for whoever it is is very strong. Female love have lion heart, strong and everlasting, only for you, and so on. So that is it. Those are the, the two songs that I played together. songs had fun within them 
and then others were telling the story. So that is it. The, the, the music, the songs that Miss Lou taught excited the children because it talked about family, it talked about community, it talked about the country. There are so many children who lived in the city and didn't know anything about what happened in the country and so on. And then Miss so. Lou started teaching us the rhythm games. And we started off with things like Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, spread in bed in a sardine pan. <laughs> yes. Mosquito one, mosquito two, mosquito jump in a hot color loop. Mosquito one, mosquito two, mosquito jump in a hot color loop. Be a bit of walk, be a bit of talk, be a bit of eat with a knife and fork. <laughs> oh, yes. And then we're Bopsy Kaisi Topi. And we say Bopsy Kaisi Miss Lou has had been so been such an inspiration and she had a wonderful approach to doing with things by teaching and some of it was part of entertainment and that sort of thing. She would always try to bring the audience into what she was doing. She would make them sing a song and sing a chorus and that sort of thing. And the audience would join in with the chorus and she would sing the song. Oh, pa, bring cake, be, be, be alone. Be, be, eat all, now give mama none. Mama get back and lick, be, be, pump. Slap hand, clap hand, till papa come home. songs that she sang. Many of them were traditional songs that you would find in different parishes in, in Jamaica and so on. And apart from that, what she would do is she would take a melody of a folk song, maybe she didn't know the words, and then she would put words to it and so on. I made it all very interesting, like, like when goat meat done or when corridor go do, you know. All of that sort of thing. When when Mary gone, then I was Charlie Doug or do. Mary cook the food, Mary wash the clothes, stretch a dollar, make two. She thought about ideas of practical living, what you needed to survive. And these things went into the songs. That's how she wrote her poems as well. Her poems were about, if you look at a book of her poems, it goes back to when she was a child. And she started. She would sit in her mother was a dressmaker. The ladies come to try on their dresses and, and pick up those that were finished and that kind of thing. And she would observe people who were passing on the street. She um, was born in Spanish town. My mother knew her when she was a teenager and she was in college with a older, much older cousin of mine and so on in Highgate. So we knew her when I was a little girl, and then um, it happened that as I grew older, I would um, accompany her when she was doing concerts. In Jamaica, they used to have um, lots of concerts that had different artists. So you might have a dancer, somebody reciting a poem, somebody singing, somebody playing on the piano, a guitarist, somebody playing violin, that kind of thing. It was a variety concert, which was something that was very strong. Miss Lou grew up on that, and then she started creating her material until um, in her early years when she had just left Excelsior High School. Um, to this person who was um, editor of the Gleaner, and when he heard her at a concert, he invited her to write a poem that was published in the Gleaner once a week. Um, and, and then after that, a lot of those poems were brought together in her first publication. And since then, she had done two or three, three books after that of work. And it, it's so interesting because from the poems, you learn so much about the country. I don't think that she got all, she, she was, she was honored. She had an OG and so on, which is the, the, the most serious um, award that you, you can get, a Jamaican award. But I don't think that since she has passed on, we have kept, um, you know, uh, 
an attitude towards her work, which was so, so valuable, so very, very valuable, and which children love at festival time. You can hear the little ones um, reciting her poems, mm -hmm. you know. We did a lot of um, research into the Jamaican um, traditional language. You know, plenty of us out there masquerading as cultural experts. But if it wasn't for Miss Lou, you know, some of us wouldn't know what we are doing at all. We're going out there, but she told us where to dig. And so we go out there and research because she do the whole of the searching out already. <laughs> and then there are so many words like Miss Lou came out. The first time I heard the word bunununus, I said, what? She says, bunununus. She says, that is nice, something that is lovely. Bunununus, you have a look, bunununus, pretty dress you have on. Your face looking good, your hair is looking good. And that is bunununus. But then she had the opposite of bunununus because most adjectives and so on would have another aspect of how you look. And when you don't look good, Miss Lou would say you're boo yaga. So that's why you hear my auntie wrote, she said that it really, really vexed her any time she hear people a, 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 a style to the Jamaica language as corruption of the English language. Because she know we make them not call English language corruption of the Norman French and the Greek and the Latin, but them say English is derived from. <laughs> You hear the word? Derived. <laughs> English derived, but Jamaica corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't say nothing ago, so. Jamaica derived too. <laughs> oh. I want people to remember her. And I think it's time for them to put up a little statue of her in Gordon Town, because her house was up on the hill. And and so on. But I think it's time for her to be honored beyond the OJ, because I think it's time for her to be um, a national hero, a national heroine, because she made sure that our culture has been kept alive and that people understand when she is speaking the Jamaican Creole what people call patois and so on. When I was at university, there was one of the courses that I did that we dealt with learning the Creole languages of the Caribbean. So we would learn some Spanish Creole, some French Creole, but we'll, we did a lot of um, research into the Jamaican um, traditional language. And it, don't down girl, no got no water fi wash them skin. Don't down girl, no got no water fi wash them skin. Why, 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 why? Police go and take them girl in charge. Police go and take them girl in charge. The uptown girl, no got no water fi wash them clothes. No got no water, we wash them clothes, keep them clean. Why, 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 why? Police going to take them gal in charge. Police going to take them gal in charge. Police going to take them gal in charge. What do you want me? <laughs> you still love to do with the children. Mm. Man in body. Yes. And I'm not mad, Marjorie. You must say man in body. Man in body. Me no body for you. Then a who then? A tenor. Which a tenor? Tenor saw. Which a saw? Sack a buyer. Which a buyer? Buy a steel. Which a steel? Steel a go. Which a go? Go the fara. Which a fara? Fara ma. Which a ma? Mama Dougal. Which a Dougal? Dougal flash. Which a flash? Flash a Benny. Which a Benny? Which a Benny? Benny are the man that go play for the young girl Rose. Then to go mama. Then to go for the lack of him girl Rose. <laughs>
thank you so much, Marjorie, for that moving tribute to your dear friend and our friend and mother of storytelling and, and comedy and, and commentary of Louise Bennett, whom we so often put in a little box. But Miss Lou was bigger than any box that has yet to be invented. Miss Lou did love singing. She did love music. I really believe that she really loved music. Of all the things we call Miss Lou, we don't call her a musician yet. What we sure said, Steve Higgins, whom we heard from at the beginning of the program doing the national anthem of Jamaica, would have taken some of his musical cues and musical notes, albeit him as a big tenor man and so on and so forth, from Louise. And so guess what now, Steve never asked her to prove it. This celebration of the 103rd anniversary of the birth of our beloved Louise Simone Bennett Coverley is brought to us as a project of the Jamaica Heroes Modernized Project. Now, if you haven't heard about that project before, it is a project that takes its raison d'etre from the fact that our young people and perhaps our old people as well, all of uh, Jamaica at home and in the diaspora need to begin to see our heroes in a multidimensional, in a more colorful, can I use the millennium word, in a more sexy light that they need to be brought to life in a different kind of way to be taken off the page, so to speak. And, and part of what they have done is to recast the images of our national heroes in brighter colors. I'm sure you must have seen that. Well, the brain behind that, the founder of the Jamaica Heroes Modernized Project, which also has a, a program called Back the Culture, is Charles Smart, who is himself an artist and who is himself responsible for the brighter colors in which we have been able to see our heroes presented. And Charles do all kind of thing and paint up other kind of people. I mean, I'm going to call them name in this program because Miss Lua Watry, and we don't want anything to overshadow Miss Lou this evening. But Charles 
has a very special Louise Bennett Coberly project. And I am going to be as surprised and as enthralled as you are because I too am now going to be seeing it for the first time. Thank you, Amina. I hope all of you are enjoying this program so far. And I hope to have finished the painting of the right honorable Louise Simone Bennett Coberly for this show, but as you'd have it, it's still a work in progress. And that's very much like our beloved country, Jamaica. And that's why the Jamaica Heroes Modernized Project, one of the things that we talk about is empowering independence. And so many of our cultural icons and dignitaries have called for Louise Bennett to be honored as a national hero. And we want, as a part of our project, to show that heroism is not dead. It's not something of the past. It's not something for those people who are in black and white photos and are no longer with us. But it's something that continues today. And heroism looks very different in different times. The heroism of Queen Annie doesn't look like the heroism of Marcus Garvey. It doesn't look like the heroism of people like Louise Bennett Coverley and the person that you see behind me. The right, hopefully in the future, we'll be calling him the right Honorable Robert Nesta Marley. And so we hope that through this project, we will highlight these individuals and the significance of the work that they've done. And as we celebrate Louise Bennett's 103rd birthday today, we want to just highlight the significance of the cultural and identity, how she's helped us to embrace our identity. You know, one of the things that no one has really spoke about yet is that she also very much like Bob Marley believed in the philosophies of Marcus Garvey, one of our national heroes. And one of the things I believe that she was doing with helping us to embrace our tongue and our language is by embracing our identity and emancipating ourselves from slavery. Slavery from what? Slavery from a mindset that was replaced by a colonial system and embracing something that's authentic to us and who we are. And so we celebrate her today. I hope you guys are enjoying the show. I want to thank all of the people. There are so many individuals to thank to make this happen. This is not something that, you know, we could have done without the help of many members of our board, many members of the Jamaican community who contribute to this and the behind the scenes folks that help to put on a production like this. I want to thank, you know, Jamaica Tourist Board for coming and supporting us for this project on this particular show. And I hope you enjoy the rest of it. Make sure you share it with your friends. It's going to be online. This project, you can log on to jamaicanationalheroes.com to learn about it, or go to our Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram pages at Jamaica National Heroes. Enjoy the rest of the show, and thank you so much for joining us today. Anybody ever hear Miss Luder in dub poetry? <laughs> Anybody know that as a result of the technology that we now command, you could have bring somebody's voice from that time and put them in a recording with somebody from this time. Well, gentle people, short and tall, big and small, they have done it with Miss Lou. And it's not just Miss Lou and anybody or everybody, you know, is Miss Lou and special people. You know how Jamaica gives special things to the world. And one of the special things we have given to the world is dub poetry. And the people them who perform dub poetry and who are the parents of dub poetry acknowledge Louise Bennett Coverley as the mother of dub poetry. Muta Baruka is one of them. Yes. So, my dear, anybody know Muta Baruka? Yes. One day, Muta come to me and him say, Miss Lou, you know that you was the first dabba? Yes. We're going to argue that next year. Miss Lou. Miss Lou is the subject. You know, Miss Lou is very dear to us because over the years we have come in contact with her and I've seen what she has done 
for the language in Jamaica. Things that I used to call bad. No, we can't add bad word. It's now acceptable. The problem I find with all the people when they talk about me is that I was a comedian, rather than a social activist. Because a lot of our opponents is social activism in the work, in the making. And we need to analyze her in that way that the people in Canada can say what she was saying because she said it in the Jamaican language. It's not a joke. Even though people love to laugh at themselves. For my aunt wrote to say, when the Asian culture and the European culture broke upon African culture in the Caribbean people, we stir them up and blend them to be flavor. We shake them up and move them to be beat. We wheel them and we turn them and we rock them and we sound them and we temper them and laugh so we can see them. And over the years we have come in contact with Miss Lou, we find say, she's a very jovial person. You know, it's easy for love her. And now them came in, we, we, we called for her to be national hero from a long time. We had a poem here, Miss Lou. Miss Lou, Miss Lou, we love you for two. We love all your chat. Some don't like that. Miss Lou, Miss Lou, you're heavy for two. Now, it's years now we see what you do for poetry here in Jamaica using our patwa. Miss Lou, Miss Lou, we love you for two. We love all your chat. Some don't love that, Miss Lou. Some say nanny a hero for two, but me think you are a hero too. When you chat, it sounds so sweet. And all your Jamaica just has skin them teeth. Now we have the opportunity to carry her to the studio and record a poem named Dirty Tough. It was one of the highlights of my poetic life when I could carry Miss Lou to Tough Gang Studio with the musician, very young musician, and she recorded a poem that she wrote 50 years previously. Imagine that. She going at the, she going at the, the studio with a poem that was written 50 years before and the only thing she changed in the poem was she changed pounds to dollar because when she did write it it's pounded in and she changed it to dollar it's a wonderful person and we recognize her as a hero for literature and for the thing that she done she do to african people understanding of them language and realize that all we chat, and no bad word, and no bad chatting, because it have its own links and connection with Africa, and because we so colonized by so many people, we are try to talk like all of them and come out in a way we call the Jamaican language. I don't know why I like call it Patwan either, the Jamaican language. And we have to give thanks to Miss Lou for that. So, we love Miss Lou again on our earth day, Irene. You know, there's a calypso that said, no, 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 this party can't done. This party can't done. I've had such a wonderful time. And there is so much that has filled my heart and filled my soul. And I really want to thank uh, the Jamaica Heroes Modernized Project and Back the Culture for putting this program together and for including me and inviting me to be a part of this feast. Now, one of the things Miss Lou taught us is that storytellers, and I'm a storyteller, storytellers are historians, storytellers have to be observant, and storytellers very often hear and overhear what other people need to hear nor overhear. Well, let me tell you what I'm hearing now. I'm hearing people saying, we have Aliba Samuels, Joan Andrea Hutchinson, Opal Palmer, Disa Blacker Ellis, I don't know, I name out all the name, name them, and I hear one of you say, then where is Faye Ellington? I am here. everybody say, it's true, how them can have a show about Miss Lou, and we don't hear from Faye Ellington, catch you? Because we would have never done that to you. How can I end a show about Miss Lou without Faye?
There's a quotation that I've used in another context and at another place for a function to do with Miss Lou, and I think I'd like to use it here too. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be using two quotations from one of our national heroes, the right excellent Norman Washington Manley. Here's the first. Jamaica needed Louise Bennett when her talents emerged. She came into public view at a time when, across the Caribbean region, there had been widespread unrest and when, increasingly, colonial assumptions were being questioned. And the second quotation is simply this. This political awakening, and this is, he's referring to the political awakening in the Caribbean, this political awakening goes hand in hand with cultural growth, and this is the change that we are seeing taking place. Around us and before our very eyes are the stirrings of the first shoots of a deeply felt national, artistic, and intellectual life. Two quotations from national hero, the right excellent Norman Washington Manley. Thank God for Miss Lou. She gave her language respectability. Those political stirrings, those social conditions, she captured them. She wrote about them. She wrote about them in a way that would have a smile about them from time to time, but there were deep, serious thoughts and circumstances that she represented. I am particularly honored and privileged to have been on stage at the Ward Theater with the Honorable Louise Bennett Coverley in my very first pantomime of 1971, written by the late Trevor Roan. That was just something that meant everything to me, to be on the stage with herself and Mass Ran and others as a youngster and watch those people work, watch their work ethic watch their discipline, and just have them impart to me what was expected of me. So Miss Lou influenced me both on stage as a performer, and then when I went to the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation and she had her show there, her radio show, and of course you know she had the TV show Ring Ding, but I'm particularly speaking about her radio show, I was often in the same place with her, the same space in the radio department, the production department, when she would come to put the finishing touches on her work and go to studio and record. I remember her sending to get patties for us. She loved patties and she always had icy mints with us uh, that she would share with us. So Miss Lou, I thank you for your contribution. I thank you for, and I use the word again, the respectability that you gave to our language, the identity that you stamped on us indelibly. And I just want to say to everyone who is a part of this event, just understand that this woman, she brings such grace to her performance. She brought such thought to what she wrote. And she really got us sitting up and recognizing that we little bit, but with Talawa. Respects, Miss Lou. You're gone on before we, but Miss still I say, walk good and make good doppy walk with you. So, in the same way, Miss Lou, our special long time girl, me never see you to begin the show. We can't end the show without the way Miss Lou normally end the show. You know that song? If you don't know it, you're going to learn it tonight. Walk good on your way and good doppy walk with you. Walk good every day and good doppy walk with you. Every day on your way, walk good, good, follow you if you just walk good. Walk good on your way and be going to walk in now. Walk good, walk good every day and good doppy walk with you. Every day on your way. Walk good, good, follow you. If you just walk good, walk good. If you just walk good. As children, we learn the true meaning of being a hero. Being a hero requires great sacrifice for others. For others, not just ourselves. We learn about the heroes of Jamaica's past and how much of themselves and their lives they had to give in building a nation we should be proud to call home. They believed in a Jamaica that was more than just a country, more than just an island, more than lanterned by water. They believed in a dream of a free nation of people. 
a nation built on the foundation of their sacrifices. A nation of many people working as one. A nation that will continue to produce legends and nation builders that serve towards that vision. As children, we were also taught the national pledge, a solemn promise, an undertaking. I would like to believe Sir Hugh Sherlock, while writing this pledge, understood the vision and dreams of our heroes. It's clear being a hero is too much to ever ask any one citizen. Luckily, the pledge does not require heroics of any of us. It merely asks that we honor our heroes by striving to advance our nation and ultimately inspire the world like they and many Jamaicans have done. It's important we remember those words. These words. Before God and all mankind, I pledge the love and loyalty of my heart through wisdom and courage of my mind, the strength and vigor of my body in service of my fellow citizens. I promise to stand up for justice, brotherhood and peace, to work diligently and creatively, to think generously and honestly, so that Jamaica may, under God, increase in beauty, fellowship and prosperity, and play her part in advancing the welfare of the whole human race. If you are like me, a Jamaican born and raised on this land, maybe you will remember saying those words, singing that song in a classroom or some general assembly. If so, like me, you made a pledge. Somehow it seems like many of us have forgotten that. The crime and violence, the indiscipline and short-sightedness, the corruption, the lack of respect for our beautiful lands we are blessed with and the waters that surround and nurtures us. We have to do better. Let us honor our heroes so that they would not have sacrificed so much in vain. I hope this video can make a difference to even one soul. If so, it would all be worth it. If you feel the way I do, share it. May my voice become yours. Thanks for watching.